okay so we are here to learn about a very important and the most beautiful technique in spectro organic spectroscopy and that is nmr uh, you can watch the previous videos on uh, uv mass and ir that i have prepared all these techniques are used for structural elucidation of the molecules we combine all these techniques and find out the structure okay or confirm the structure IR gives you the information of functional group, UV gives you information about the electronic environment, electronic transitions and uh, mass gives you the information about the fragmentation pattern and now here we are with NMR which gives you information about the hydrogens in the molecule. NMR technique depends upon like there are different NMR techniques like proton NMR, carbon NMR. So here we are learning proton NMR. NMR full form is nuclear magnetic resonance. So what exactly it is? This pro technique is based on the property of nuclear spin. Okay, so nuclei are positively charged species and they spin around the axis. Now, because of the spin, they create uh, their own magnetic field, they act as a tiny magnets they act as tiny magnet they have a tiny magnetic field. So, proton being a positively charged hydrogen atom, it acts as a nuclei it acts as a tiny bar magnet due to its spin so here we are using this technique for finding out the number of hydrogen atoms in a molecule not necessarily all nuclei are suitable for nmr there are certain nuclei these ones hydrogen carbon 13 there are two isotopes of carbon carbon 12 carbon 13 uh, the nmr active nuclei is carbon 13 and c12 is not active we can go for f19 p31 so these are the nuclei which are having a spin of 1 by 2 which are nmr active okay in proton it is hydrogen h1 which is nmr active okay before going to this let's study the basic how the arrangement is done we just have to take the sample and place it between two strong magnets or uh, between two uh, uh, between the poles of strong magnetic field then you have to apply radio frequency and due to this there is flipping so we will see what is flipping of uh, spin or spin flip this flipping is detected and by the detector and uh, you get a signal and the spectrum that you get uh, the computer processes the signal and then you get a display which is nothing but an NMR spectrum okay so what happens exactly when you place this molecule in the magnetic field before play before the when the magnetic field is not applied all the nuclear magnetic fields are randomly oriented as you can see over here they are randomly oriented but when external magnetic field is applied there is a certain arrangement in the magnetic field so either the nuclei arrange uh, align themselves in the direction of the applied magnetic field suppose you are uh, applying the magnetic field in this direction so you can see this nuclei this nuclei they are in the same direction you can see the arrows in the same direction though so these two are aligning themselves in the applied magnetic field if you look at these these are in the opposite arrows so they are against the applied magnetic field so this is how the arrangement takes place once you apply magnetic field now when the sample is placed over here then there is splitting uh, there is spin uh, splitting in this uh, you can say spin states there are two possible spin states which are possible so one is plus one by two spin uh, plus half you can say or minus half okay so when the sample is placed in the magnetic field of a very strong magnet two possible spin states exist one is having a lower energy which is the plus half spin state and which is aligned in the direction of the magnetic field that is applied and the second is the higher energy minus half spin state which is aligned opposite which is opposite to the external magnetic field okay and now when you apply electromagnetic radiations in the form of radio waves they cause the spin of the nuclei to flip and then you have and then you say that the nuclei are in resonance okay so what exactly that means so now 
as i said there is there are when initially when the external field was absence uh, absent the the there was no difference in the energies of the spins but when you apply magnetic spin uh, magnetic field there are two spin states possible one is the plus half spin state which is having uh, lower energy lower energy and which is more stable and the minus half spin state which is having more energy and it is less stable because the more stable or the lower energy it is having lower energy this has comparatively more population so and this have this has less population so you can say uh, like suppose 100 we take a 100 number so this could be 60% and the uh, the opposite spin say state could be 40% or this could be 70% 30% i'm just giving you an hypothetical example okay so that means that the more stable states will be in more proportion compared to the less stable states now the difference in the energy of the two spins increases as you go on increasing the magnetic strength now this is what we are going to study in nuclear magnetic resonance the alignment of the magnetic moment with the field is more stable when it is in when it is against the field so this is more stable which is aligning itself now you can see the direction of the magnetic field is this and this is the alignment of the spin so both are parallel to each other hence they are aligned okay and the one which are aligned are more stable the one which are opposite are less stable okay hence energy in the form of radiation so to go from this state to this state this is called as spin flip okay this is called as spin flip plus half to minus half is called as spin flip to cause this flipping you need to pro provide energy okay so energy in the form of radiation is required to flip the proton from more stable state to less stable state and this energy required to flip the proton depends upon the strength of the external magnetic field so there are two things that we are providing to the molecule one is the external magnetic field and an another is the radio waves okay hence if the magnetic field is stronger the radiation of higher frequency is required and the radio waves are having radiation of higher frequency that is why the radio waves which are having higher frequency they are having more energy and they are capable of flipping the nucleus ir radiations are not that stronger so they just cause vibrations in the molecule are you getting this so the different types of energies can cause different types of uh, changes in the molecule okay now when energy required to flip the electron matches the energy of radiation causing absorption it is called as nuclear magnetic resonance now they are in resonance with each other i'll give you a simple example suppose you want to listen to a song on 97.5 fm or i don't know what that frequency is let's say 97.5 fm so you know that the song is going to play on 97.5 fm so you start tuning your radio right and you go on turning that knob until you get uh, uh, until you listen to that song so what is that tuning tuning is you are matching the frequency with 97.5 now after tuning when both the frequency matches you get to listen to the song so this 97.5 if you compare with nmr is the energy required to flip the electron you tuning the knob is the radiation that you are providing to the nucleus now matching of 97.5 and u tuning the knob is nothing but that the frequencies are matching the energies are now matching now the flipping will take place flipping taking place means what now you are able to listen the song now you say that these two things are in resonance with each other and this technique is now called as nuclear magnetic resonance okay so this was all about the theory now we come to the important part about interpreting the nmr spectra so this be there uh, till the end of the video we are going to learn lot of things over here and you will understand everything about nmr about the basics of nmr okay so the first thing that we are going to study is how the nmr spectrum looks like so something like this okay so on the y axis there is intensity it's a plot of intensity of absorption of radiation versus magnetic field strength or the frequency of radiation okay 
when we, proton is used as a new when the pro, nucleus is a proton we called as proton magnetic resonance and uh, when we have c13 we call this as c13 technique where carbon is the nucleus okay the delta scale is most commonly used with which the reference signal is used as tms so we are going to study about what is tms the signal from tms is taken as zero so consider this value as zero and all the values for the tech or the nmr are considered with reference of zero for the tms now there are two scales that we can take one is the delta scale and one is the tau scale okay in tau scale the tms signal is taken as 10 whereas in delta scale it is taken as 0, 0.0 so this is a formula of delta ppm is hertz upon megahertz where uh, you have the radio frequency which is generally taken in megahertz and when you want to calculate it convert it to hertz and do the calculation okay so tau is equal to 10 minus delta and then you get uh, all the calculations you get all the values and you this this is the plot that we directly get through the detector four types of information you can get from nmr uh, depending upon by studying these four points one is the number of signals that you are getting in the spectra positions of the signals intensity okay uh, area that is the area under the signal and splitting of the signal so all these things we are going to study one by one so the first point is number of signals number of signals provides you the information about the number of sets of non equivalent protons or different uh, protons present in the molecule now i'll first give you an example and then we will go into the details now let's take example of ch3 ch2 oh if you look at the protons okay so let's first find out the different types of protons present here so this is one type of proton okay which is attached to oxygen it is different this is a second type of proton so if i write the expanded structure and if you check which protons are similar so this proton is attached to carbon this proton attached to carbon this is also attached to carbon so these are same type of protons so i'll call it as c this ch h and this h is attached to c so these are also same type of proton so i will call it as b and this is now completely different which is, which is attached to oxygen so i will call it as a so now you have three types of protons a b and c so i have three types of protons so my number of signals will be three and these are different a b c protons are different so we call them as non equivalent protons okay so here we are going to study the concept of equivalent and non equivalent let me take first one more example and then i will go into that theory so if i look at this my ch3 is attached to oxygen this ch3 is also attached to oxygen that means environment for this ch3 is same this ch3 is also same so if i name this as a this is also similar to this so i will name this also as a so i have only one type of proton if i have only one type of proton i will get only one signal okay now let's take example you people can also uh, check uh, before I, uh, the video how many signals could be possible for this. Okay, so let's start with this CH3. Now my three hydrogens attached are attached to this. So these are A type of protons. This CH2 is different from the rest of the molecule. The environment is, and definitely this is CH2, this is CH3. So definitely this has to be different. Now this is also CH3, this is also CH3. So should I call it as A? No. The reason being my A is attached to CH2. So my environment is different. This CH3 is attached to oxygen. So these set of protons are completely different. So this is C. So how many types of protons are there? Three types. So how many signals are you going to get? Three signals. Okay. So here we are talking about equivalent and non-equivalent protons. So what are equivalent protons? Protons that reside in the same magnetic environment are chemically equivalent. So general thumb rule is all H in CH3s are same. All H in CH2s are same. So these are equivalent, these are equivalent, okay. And if the environment is also same, then those are also equivalent. 
protons that are different in any way even in the stereochemistry so this is uh, going into stereochemistry is more uh, and uh, you know there are more uh, depth into nmr there is more depth into nmr as we go dig into this technique but here in this video we are going to learn only basics and after that i will be making videos about all the stereochemistry and everything okay so even if they are different in stereochemistry they are non equivalent protons and they will absorb at different frequency if they are different protons definitely different frequency so definitely they will give you separate signals on nmr so protons within a compound experience different magnetic environment and that is why they give you different signals okay so i hope you have understood this what are equivalent and non equivalent protons similarly if i uh, i'll just give you a example so three signals i will get so if this is my nmr this is the reference that i'm talking about uh, it's not exactly like this but just for the sake of your understanding i'm showing you if i consider this as a b and c this is my a b and c suppose you have an molecule like this that i showed you three so three separate signals we are going to get for this and it will look something like this sorry uh, so for now again i told you it is not exactly like the way it is appearing right now so this is my let's say a b and c so here in this case this is b uh this is a and this is c now why they are having different positions and everything we are going to study later in this video so right now you just have to remember the number of signals indicates number of non equivalent sets of protons okay next is relative intensity of the signals or we sometimes call it as area under the signal this gives you the relative number of equivalent protons on that particular carbon or a group now for example ch3oh okay so if i have ch3oh i have two sets of protons right what are the two where is my pointer ha huh? i have two sets of protons one is a and one is b right now my signal for a is this and my signal for b is this if i look at the ratio for this is one proton and this is three so the ratio is 1 is to 3 or 3 is to 1 okay so the relative intensities of the signal are the area under the signal which corresponds to the number of protons responsible for that signal the lowest one is considered as the ratio 1 here we are calculating ratio okay so not necessary when i say one it has to be just one proton no it's about the ratio in this example it's coming out to be one but it's not like that it is always the ratio of the protons and not the absolute number so the one with the smallest integration is considered as one and all the other values are compared to that so when if i this is the smallest integration so i will consider it as one and if you look at this this is like three times of this so my other ratio is what one is to three so what is the ratio here one is to three that means on one atom or carbon there is just one and on the other the ratio is three so you can see one is to three so here i'll repeat again it is not the exact number of protons but in coincidentally in this example it is also giving you the exact number of protons it just gives you the integration it just gives you the ratio of the number of protons now let's take example um okay i'll take this example ch3 take example of So calculate the equivalent non equivalent protons so this is one set this is second set check whether this ch3 is similar to this ch3 check the environment on the either side yes it is so this is a so two types of protons a and b so you get two signals okay how these signals will look in the nmr one is this and the other one is this if you consider the ratio it is three times so this is one and this is three times okay so what is the ratio one is to three and if you look at this these are two protons is to six 
1 is to 3. So, it tells you the ratio, not the exact number. Now, we are going to study more and then we will see how exactly we are going to interpret this integration. So, stay with me till the end of the video. Okay. Now, before going to the positions of the signal, this one important point you need to know is the reference which is used for uh, NMR or PMR. Okay. The reference used for PMR is tetramethylsilane. This is the structure of tetramethylsilane. It's a solvent. It's a liquid. Why is it used as a liquid? First, it has, uh, I'll go to this point later. It has uh, many organic compounds dissolve into it. Its boiling point is also very low. It's highly volatile. It has a boiling point of 27 degrees Celsius. It evaporates faster. You can recover the sample. It is very inert. It doesn't react with the sample and uh, very stable. Okay. Next, this CH3, if you look at the CH3, all these CH3s are equivalent. Right, the, all the protons are equivalent. So there are total 12 chemically equivalent protons uh, attached to silicon. And because the silicon is low electronegativity, uh, there is shielding of the signal. I'll, we are going to learn about shielding and deshielding. Right now, you just remember that the signal obtained by TMS is always considered as 0 ppm and all the signals of the NMR of the protons are considered above this 0 ppm. Now for example you have two types of CH3 groups over here. So this is A, this is B. So you will get two signals. Yes or no? Now in spite of them both being CH3 you can see there are different positions of CH3. So this is my CH3 number B and this is my CH3 number A. So in spite of being CH3 the positions of the signals for CH3 are different. So why the positions of the CH3s are different we are going to study in the chemical shifts concept. So right now you will just have to remember what is the reference used for PMR. It is tetramethylsilane. And all the values of the PMR are taken with respect to 0 0.00 ppm which is on the extreme right. So TMS is the standard use for PM, NMR. Okay. Now chemical shifts or the positions of the signals. What do they tell you? They tell you about the electronic environment. Okay, electronic environment means what? Okay, or in short, I can say you different types of protons attached to different electronic environment gives you a different positions of the signals. What does that mean? Every proton or this nuclei are surrounded by a set of electron or you can say electron cloud is there. Okay, so different kind of protons have different electronic environment. And this electronic environment decides the frequency at which the proton is going to absorb the radiation and give a signal. Electrons which are surrounding this nuclei, they circulate when present, placed in a magnetic field. And these circulating electrons, they create a small magnetic field around the nucleus. So this magnetic field created by the electrons is called as induced magnetic field. So every nuclei will create an induced magnetic field because of the electrons which is surrounding it. Okay. Now, what is this induced magnetic field? It is a magnetic field created by the electron cloud which is surrounding the nucleus. Now, depending upon this induced magnetic field. Now, you, let's just look at this example like the previous one I said the, like say let's say A, B, C and D. So there are four types of protons so you are getting four signals. Now out of these four signals I'll tell you this is for OH. Okay this is for CH2. Here this is CH3 twice. So this is proton this is A and this is my CH3. This is your C signal. Okay 
fine and you can also see the integration how the integrations are different this is one proton this is two this is three and these are six now in spite of ch3 group the two ch3 groups are appearing at different positions why they are appearing at different position the reason is the electronic environment okay so how electronic environment affects the chemical shift two points two words that you need to remember in nmr are shielding and deshielding okay so shielding and deshielding causes shifts in the position of the nmr signal and this shift is called as chemical shift what exactly that means now when you have a nuclei surrounded by an electron cloud okay so this nuclei is shielded by the electron cloud so when you apply a magnetic field the nuclei the magnetic field felt by this nuclei is less because of the magnetic field of this electron cloud because the magnetic field is opposing the applied magnetic field so this is the induced magnetic field by the electron cloud which is opposing the magnetic field and this is your external magnetic field now if the electrons are opposing the external magnetic field the magnetic field will felt by the nucleus will be less yes or no magnetic field felt by the nucleus is less example i will give you a simple example a bulletproof jacket suppose you are wearing a wearing a bullet bu uh, sorry bu bulletproof jacket and someone shoots at you what happens you will be saved right from that bullet bullet right why because you are having a shield you are having a jacket right so that jacket is opposing the uh, the effect felt by the bullet same thing is here the electron cloud which is attached to the nucleus is your is the bulletproof jacket the bullet is the external magnetic field you are the nucleus and the jacket is the induced magnetic field so it is opposing so if the induced magnetic field is opposing the applied magnetic field the this decreases the effective magnetic field felt by the proton if the magnetic field felt by the proton is less okay the signal shifts to right the signal shifts to right so what do you mean by right hand side i'll just this is the right hand side okay so this is your right hand side and this is the left hand side this is called as the upfield shift so my signal is because of the shielding the shielding is because of the electron cloud okay hence the magnetic field felt by the nuclei will be less if magnetic field felt by the nuclei is less less energy is required or lower frequency is required to flip the electron right if the magnetic field is fe uh, felt by the nucleus is more more energy is required to flip the nuclei right so because the magnetic field felt by the nuclei is less less energy is required so the signal appears upfield so upfield signal is because of shielding of the nuclear okay now exactly opposite is deshielding now what is deshielding suppose your nuclei is uh, attached to an electronegative atom like say oxygen so what does oxygen do oxygen is an electronegative atom which pulls the electrons towards itself so this whole electron cloud is pulled by the oxygen so the nucleus which was now before uh, oxygen which was surrounded by the electron cloud now this electron cloud has shifted towards oxygen so now this is open the nucleus is open it's like you are not wearing a bulletproof jacket if you're not wearing a bullet proof jacket what will happen you will hit by a, you will get hit by a bullet right okay sorry for using this terminology will instead of bullet let's take stone so you will get hit by a stone right so impact will be more impact is more 
so same thing happens with the nucleus if the electron cloud is not available the magnetic field felt by the nucleus is more if the magnetic field felt by the nucleus is more more energy will be required to flip that electron if you need more energy the signal is going to appear at a higher value right so if when i say i take the tms signal as zero where is my uh, this tms signal is zero and this is scale is 14 delta scale zero to 14 so this is the higher value no so my value is shifting on the higher side i will need more energy to flip that electron this is called as d shielding and this d shielding is associated with electronegativity if a electronegative atom is attached to the nuclei it removes the electrons from the electron cloud this decreases their density and results in less shielding which is called as d shielding Hence, electronegative atoms are said to de-shield the proton and because of the de-shielding, more magnetic field is felt by the nuclei. More magnetic field means it will require more energy to uh, flip the nuclei. So, magnet, I hope you are understanding this. So, we call this as de-shielding of the nuclei and the signal shifts downfield. So, downfield means more value. Okay, so remember it this way, D for de-shielded and D for downfield. So whenever an electronegative atom is attached uh, to that nuclei, it will always show you higher value or it will be downfield signal. When electronegative atom is not attached to the nuclei, the signal will appear upfield. That means at a lower value. <laughs> Also, the magnitude of the de-shielding effect decreases as the distance between the proton and the electronegative atom decreases. If you look at the values over here, it is for CH3 only. This CH3 is showing a value of 9.93 ppm and it is far away from bromine which is an electronegative atom. And when the CH3 is directly attached to bromine, the signal is very downfield, 2.69. So look at the difference for the same group CH3. When it is attached to an electronegative atom which is very near or when it is attached to the same electronegative atom when it is far. So this is how the chemical shifts take place. Also the chemical shift depends upon the electronegativity of the atoms. If a more electronegative atom is attached to the same group, the signal will appear more downfield. For example, fluorine, which is the most electronegative atom, right? It de-shields, it, it removes the electrons on the nuclei, okay? So, definitely the signal appears downfield. So, the same CH2 under normal condition, when it is not attached to any electronegative atom, the signal is shown somewhere around 1, 1.2. But now when this CH2 attached to a very electronegative atom, the signal is appeared at around 4. Similarly, oxygen. Now, oxygen is less electronegative than fluorine. So, the signal is appeared little bit upfield compared to this. See, chlorine is again less electronegative than fluorine. Again, that is appearing 3.5. So, depending on how far, what is the electronegativity. Now, your CH2 is not attached to oxygen or fluorine or chlorine. It is attached to carbon and this carbon is attached to oxygen. So, slightly far from the electronegative atom and hence the signal is still upfield. So, more the electronegativity of the atom or more electron withdrawing group present, stronger the proton feel the magnetic field and they appear less shielded and they are more exposed to the field. More exposed to the field means more magnetic field felt by that nuclei. More magnetic field felt by the nuclei means more energy required to flip that electron. So, when the signal goes to the left hand side, it is de-shielded or downfield. When the signal goes to right hand side, the, we say it is shielded or it is upfield. This is shielding and de-shielding. I hope you have understood this. There are certain values that you may have to learn for NMR, which you may have to literally by heart. Okay, 
the most important ones that we most of the time require are these three values and depending on whether they are attached to you know electronegative atom or not then the signal shifts to upfield or downfield so these are those values for upfield and downfield apart from that you may require to learn more values like for rsh roh r nh2 or benzene ring protons okay these are the benzene ring protons aldehydic proton where it appears so carboxylic acid proton where it appears so whichever uh, protons that i have ticked mark are some of the important values that you may have to learn for interpreting nmr signals now for example there is this one molecule ch2 o ch3 and c okay now there are two types of protons present over here okay what are the two types of protons a and b so how many signals we expect two signals one for ch3 one for ch2 now the normal range of ch3 if it is primary the normal range is somewhere over here somewhere like 0.9 or something like that but now because it is attached to electronegative atom it will not be observed at one it will shift where downfield so instead of getting the signal at say 1 or 0.9 you are getting the signal at a higher value 3.5 okay similarly ch2 is also attached to oxygen now for a secondary proton the normal range is around 1.2 to 1.4 but now it is attached to oxygen also there is a nitrogen atom present over here so two electronegative groups are attached so you won't get the signal at around 1.2 or 1.4 it will be downfield higher value so you get a signal at a higher value at 4.2 okay also if you look at the integration this is the ratio that it shows the ch2 signal is smaller than the ch3 and this integration tells you the number of protons first you get the ratio and then depending upon the molecular formula you calculate the exact number of protons so this is called as shielding and deshielding or we can say chemical shift this is what happens uh when the proton is attached to different electronic environment okay the next uh point that uh, we are going to study is interpret under interpretation of nmr is splitting of the signals now so far we have we have what we have seen we have seen some only single single lines like this okay but this is not how the nmr looks like it looks like this that means you don't get a single triangle you don't get a single peak your peak is uh splits into different splits diff uh, different signals small signals okay this is called as splitting of the signals so your one signal what we were expecting is a singlet like this we were expecting a single triangle so it's not like that it it splits so what is this splitting okay splitting of the signal tells you the electronic or it sorry it tells you the environment of the proton with respect to other in simple words it tells you uh, the information about the neighboring proton nmr signals are not singlets or not single triangles but they are complex pattern they can be doublets triplets okay quartets doublet c singlet means this this is called a singlet doublet means the same signal it's split into two this is a doublet this is a triplet this is a quartet okay so you never get you get a singlet under certain conditions but this is how your sig your pattern looks like now why this splitting takes place we are going to study here now so protons on adjacent carbon atoms interact and they split let let me first take an example and then i will explain you the splitting let's take example of ethanol okay let's start from the basics three types of protons a b and c so how many signals are there three signals in nmr hmm so we were expecting three signal now this is your tms tms the signal is taken as zero okay now if you look at this what i expect is i we were expecting three signals like this okay that is what we studied so far this is oh this is ch2 and this is ch3 but but the nmr 
spectra is not like this okay it is not like this so what does it look like my ch3 signal doesn't look like this or my ch2 signal doesn't look like this so this is my oh signal ch2 signal i'll first draw and then i'll explain you why it looks like this this is ch2 and uh, sorry i'll draw a better diagram this is my ch3 signal okay this is ch3 on board the diagram comes very beautiful this is so forget it so coh ch2 ch3 okay so you can see it's not a single signal but there are they, the signal is split now splitting this is called a splitting the reason is the neighbors which are present now to my ch3 is attached ch2 okay so signal of my ch3 splits because of its neighbor ch2 and how is it splitting the formula is n plus 1 so on ch2 how many protons are present on ch2 two protons are present two protons so splitting for ch3 will be n plus 1 that is 2 plus 1 that is equal to 3 so what is my signal going to split into triplet three means triplet so you can see this is a triplet my this ch2 is attached to ch3 how many protons are there three protons so 3 plus 1 how many four so my ch2 signal is going to split into quartet okay oh h is not attached to any proton okay so this appears as singlet right now why the splitting takes place uh, not necessarily oh is going to be a singlet now but now i'm just sticking to the basics uh, there is lot of a uh, lot to study in nmr it's a very beautiful concept why the splitting takes place this way why you are getting quartet why you are getting triplet i will cover this in a separate video i don't want to mess up with this right now because you will get confused right now we are just sticking to the basics okay so right now what you need to remember splitting gives you the information about neighboring proton splitting gives you the information about neighboring proton when i say my signal is quartet that means the neighbor is having two pro uh, sorry three protons when i say my signal is triplet that means the neighboring proton sir 2 when i say my sing signal is singlet that means there is no neighboring proton if there are more than four protons there could be a pen uh, uh five uh, the the signal may split into five signals the signal may split into six signals so we we generally call them as directly multiplet okay so this is called as splitting the splitting is because of the non equivalent neighboring protons okay so if the protons are non equivalent they will split if the protons are equivalent they will not split for example let's study for few more example suppose i have this i assign this as a this is also ch2 check with the environment this ch2 is attached to ch2 chlorine yes this ch2 is also attached to ch2 and chlorine yes that means these two are same so they are equivalent protons if they are equivalent no splitting that means this signal will be just singlet because it is just a because neighboring protons are equivalent no splitting takes place so you get only singlet similarly if you have ch3 o ch3 okay this is also a this will be also a because same environment again no neighboring proton there is no adjacent proton if no adjacent proton means no splitting right if no splitting that means signal is going to be singlet you just calculate the area under the signal you will get a integration and that we then using a formula and other techniques we come to know that this could be the structure similarly let's take one more example 
CH3, C double bond O, CH3. Again, they are having equivalent protons. So again, you are going to get a singlet. Then this is the benzene ring, which is attached to CH3. Told me. So this is one set of protons. This B is a second set of protons. Again, you are going to get two signals. Right now, this CH3, you will say why it is not splitting because if you look at this carbon atom, okay, what is it? It's not having any proton. No, this carbon is not having branding proton, so no neighboring proton. So again, it will get a singlet. I hope you are understanding this. Okay, so this is how the splitting takes place. Now, let's take some examples where uh, this is uh, for this, no splitting was there. Let's take some examples where splitting will take place. Okay, so suppose CH3, first identify the types of protons. So I'll start A, B, of course different. Are these two same or different? You check. This CH2 attached to CH3, CH2. This CH2 is attached to CH2B, are definitely environment is different. Three types of protons. So how many signals you expect? Three signals. Now we will also calculate the splitting. Signal of A will split because of B. How many protons are there on B? Two. So my signal of CH3 will split into three. That is a triplet. My signal of B will split because of A and C. Now how many protons are there on A? Three. And how many protons are there on C? Two. Uh, you can either add these two 3 plus 2 is 5 5 plus 1 is 6 but the the thing is this split separately so 3 plus 1 is 4 2 plus 1 is 3 so 7 so instead of talking about the exact number we will directly call it as multiplet let's say this ch2 c c is attached to c is attached to ch2 is attached to this ch2 two neighboring protons so this signal will also split into triplet okay so what are the signals triplet multiplet and multi uh, triplet see what i was talking about the multiplet is why am i calling it multiplet let's say i'll explain it again my ch2 is attached to ch3 so first splitting is because of ch3 so i'll get four the signal will be also the signal will also split because of this c so 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 so total is 7 okay so you get a multiplet so in some books you might also get they will simply add 3 plus 2 that is equal to 5 and 5 plus 1 is equal to 6 sectet heptate okay so uh, but the, the correct way is basically this because they are different protons so of course the splitting pattern the, the, the way they will split that proton will be different but we are not going to go into whether it will give sex, sex, sectate or sept, heptate we will simply call it as multiplet okay that is the idea so let's see how the signal will look like and now we can also incorporate the uh, splitting pattern uh, the chemical shifts pattern so suppose I draw this this is my TMS Hmm. A, B, C. Signal for CH3 is generally appear at uh, you know 1.3 or something. But now that signal is split into a triplet. So it will be somewhere um, you know somewhere around say 1.2. I will I'll check because bromine is also there. No. Then CH2, CH2. Now which one will come upfield out of the B and C? This CH2 is attached to more electronegative atom. Therefore, this CH2 will go downfield compared to B. So B, which is there, which is a multiplet, you can, uh, you know, I will just draw a multiplet. So this is signal for B. This is signal for A. And the, 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 the last signal is for C, which is also a triplet if you look at these the integrations are going the height of these peak will be same because they are having ch2s whereas a will be little bit longer than b and c because it has more protons compared to ch3 and if i go for the values somewhere over here so this will be i'm just giving you approximate but 
um uh, this this ch2 uh, could be somewhere around say uh, 1.6 or 2 or this could be somewhere around 2 because bromine is attached right this is how the splitting takes place this could be on a higher side also okay i hope you people are understanding this let's take one more example ch3 ch ch3 br what will it look like this is a this is b this will be also a because same environment my a splits because of b so a is same no so a is same so a is splitting because of b means what is the uh, splitting for b 1 plus 1 so 2 so you are going to get a doublet and my a uh, sorry b splits because of ch3 right now there are total 3 plus 3 there are 6 so this will be a multiplet okay so two signals you get you get a dub uh, you get a doublet for this and you get a multiplet for this hmm okay this is how the splitting takes place you can study some examples now and the difference between the uh, split peaks is called as j value coupling constant i will not go into much much detail about the coupling constant right now i'll make a separate video on that okay the interaction between the nearby protons produce different spin flip energies so that they can orient themselves either parallel or anti parallel so all these things i'll cover in the next video uh you just have to remember the neighboring proton split signals they provide the information about the neighbors so you can take one example over here so three types of protons are present over here let's say this is proton a this is b and this is c this ch3 and this ch3 are different because the environment or the neighbors are different okay now this b will split because of a so 3 plus 1 is equal to 4 you are going to get a quartet so see the signal for b quartet because it is attached to oxygen it shifts down field okay this ch3 which is a right this ch3 uh, a it is having three hydrogens this is having three hydrogens now out of these two which one is attached to ch now out of these two which one is this a how will you come to know a this ch3 is attached to ch2 so therefore signal of this will split into 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 that is a triplet and this one is not attached to any proton so this will give you a singlet so this is the singlet and this is the triplet that means this is ch3 which is attached to CH2 because it is CH2 attached and it is far from the oxygen you are getting it upfield and this CH3 is closer to the electronegative atom you are getting it slightly downfield okay this is how the signals look like hmm? similarly look at this example CH3 it is not attached to any proton or carbon neighboring no neighboring proton is there so here you will get a singlet because it is attached to the oxygen atom the signal will appear downfield so instead of 0.9 the signal is appeared at 3.50 because of the chemical shift because of d shielding similarly CH2 proton pro peak which should have been at 1.2 it is appeared at 4.2 and since there are no neighboring protons you are getting a singlet for that and if you look at the intensities you can clearly see that the CH2 peak is smaller compared to CH3 peak and when you take the ratio and uh, you know calculate with the help of the formula and everything this is what you get okay similarly uh, you can see there are three types of protons over here so this is a this is b and right now for benzene ring let me just consider this c if you go into a uh, uh, depth of nmr each sig each uh, proton of the benzene ring will also show you a different value but right now we are just doing basics Pro benzene signals we consider from say 6 to 7 8 or uh, 7 to 8 ppm so we are going to just stick to that right now okay so a signal will split because of b into a 
triplet so this will be a triplet and my CH2 will split because of the CH3 into quartet so this is my CH2 signal this is my CH3 so definitely it's going to give you a uh, you know uh, information about its neighboring protons okay here there are one two three and this is how the splitting pattern looks like you know uh, it's it, it will give you a more idea uh, this as i told you that benzene ring protons not necessarily they are going to give you a singlet uh, or they are going to appear at one value that is more uh, in detail study about nmr which we are i'm not covering right now so this was all about nmr this is a quick summary number of signals gives you different kind of protons integration the height of the signal or the area of the signal gives you the number of non-equivalent set of non-equivalent protons so uh, position of the signals gives you the nature of protons or the electronic environment whether it is shielded or de-shielded splitting of the signal gives you the information about the neighboring proton how and the neighboring proton causes the split so splitting triplet tells you that the neighboring proton should have two uh, you know neighboring carbon should have two protons quartet tells you that the neighboring carbon should have three protons singlet tells you that there are no neighboring protons so this is a takeaway for your mcq type of questions this is very very important you will get a molecule you will be asked what are the number of signals for this particular molecule just find out with the formula of a b c what are the different kinds of protons if there are three different kinds of protons you will get three signals you will also get questions on splitting of the signals if it's a triplet then the neighboring proton will be so and so so accordingly you will have to answer uh, i'm going to make a separate video on interpretation uh, so you can uh, with a lot of examples so we are going to continue this chapter and a separate video on and isotropy also i hope you have understood this if you have any query regarding this you can post it in the comment section thank you